Hi, gang. This is Larry Williams, and it's a real pleasure to be back here on StockCharts.com to talk about will we get a Christmas rally this year? You know, we usually do, but not always. So we need to focus in on what's going to happen this year. Plus, I've got a special follow-up on recommendations, things we've done in the past here for StockCharts.com, and also some comments coming up for you on gold and Bitcoin. So let's get started. Will stocks rally this Christmas? You know, we usually rally. This is something that Yale Hirsch wrote about many years ago. We'll talk about him in a moment as well. Uh, but we don't always rally at Christmas. That's a seasonal pattern. These seasonal patterns don't always work. So can we figure out if it worked this year or won't work this year? Let me talk about that for you. First of all, here is that seasonal pattern. If we look at 2015, this is the month of December, and you can see the low point came around the 14th, 15th of, of December. Around the middle of the month in 2015, stocks rallied, and stocks really weren't in a big uh, uptrend. They are actually in a downtrend that year. So to give you a sense of the seasonal pattern, uh, in 2019, we were in a very strong uptrend, and there's the middle of the month again. Stocks were rallying, but right at the middle of the month, oh, they spread it up quite a bit. Oh, it looks like there may be some type of mid-month phenomena in December. Let's take a look at that a little bit more. Here's last year, 2020. As we get into the middle of the month, stocks really aren't rallying the first part of December, but then around the middle of the month, they take off to the upside again. Just how viable is this pattern? I'd like to show you. If we go back to 1987, remember that? Just before the bear market began, we see a similar response. Now, the data that I just showed you, that little red line we were just looking at on this chart, that was using data uh, up to date, up to 2020. This chart only uses data up to 1987. So we're not using any out of sample data. And again, we see around the middle of December, here's the first of December, the end of December, uh, prices rallied well that year, but around the middle of the month, that's when things really started to take off to the upside. If we look at 2007, remember that was just before the big bear market began, the 2008 bear market, a real market debacle. Well, we didn't start real well in December, but there it is right around the middle of the month. There's the 17th of December, the 10th of December, got it? Prices rallied, short-term rally in the marketplace. Now, all of this work, I'd like to acknowledge Yale Hirsch, who I mentioned earlier. It's a picture of Yale with his son. I first met his son, Jeffrey, when he was maybe six years old. Yale passed away uh, a few weeks ago, and I'd just like to acknowledge the tremendous insight and help he was to me personally and to so many other people with his Stock Traders Almanac. He really popularized the idea of seasonality. Christmas rallies, oh, that was a Yale Hirsch idea. Um, January barometer, another Yale Hirsch idea. Uh, Yale had so many ideas. Remarkable man, not only in the market, but things he did outside of the market as well. So tip of the hat and a great big thanks to Yale Hirsch. A real strong influence in my life and just a remarkable a real gentleman. Oh my gosh, what a great guy Yale was. And when I was a young man and just getting started in this business and kind of a hotshot guy, Yale came to me and had some ideas and they were wonderful and he was able to help me a lot. I really want to acknowledge and a real thanks to Yale Hirsch. Rest in peace. Okay, so what about 2022? What's going to happen as we start the year here? Well, stockcharts.com to the rescue. Here's the seasonal pattern in stockcharts.com. And look at this, 1215, there it is. You can get our seasonal, true seasonal pattern in stockcharts.com right at the middle of the month. That's when we should start to rally around the 15th calendar day, not trading day, but around the 15th of December. That's the optimal sweet spot. Still, we went all the way back to 1987. Uh, and you, if you go back in time, you'll see for the last... 40, 50 years, right around the middle of the month. So while well, the market's been real choppy recently, big down days, big up days, all that stuff, right? The actuality is we're getting ready for that seasonal rally to come in just a few more days. 
Now, I like to confirm these things. So, you know, just seasonality is nice, but I'd like a little confirmation. Here's some confirmation tools you can use. Above, we see the Dow Jones Industrial Average in StockTrust.com. And below, we have the Accumulation Index, also available in StockTrust.com. And here's a real kicker. As we went lower prices right here in uh, price in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, look at the accumulation. It did not go to a lower price, and we rallied. The recent peak in the market, and just the exact opposite. Well, price were rallying, looking good. If you just looked up here at price, but if you look down here, go, well, wait a minute. There's no accumulation in this market. We failed to make a new high in accumulation. In fact, while kind of holding around up here, look at the uh, distribution going on in the marketplace. So to confirm this December 15th turnaround to the upside of the market, we should pay attention to the accumulation line and a couple of other things as well to help us get a pretty good understanding of exactly how good is this rally going to be and will it take place this year. There's more things we can look at as well. Here we're looking at my money flow index. The money flow index, when it gets high in this area, we want to be a buyer. It just got into the buy area, so that's more confirmation. You see back here, it was in the sell area, prices came down. And the sell over here, prices came down. Sell over here, prices came down. So we continue to stay in this buy area. Good news, confirmation that this year we should get that seasonal tendency to rally in the marketplace. You know, I also like to look at valuation. We have that in stockcharts.com. We just recently entered the undervaluation model. Now that doesn't happen very often. It happened in September, it happened last June. We don't get an undervalued very often in the market. And when we do, again, it's not a timing tool, but it's a great setup to say, oh, there's a value here. What that means is big players will come into the market and start to buy weakness which starts to set up a market, a low point in the market. So that's what we're really looking for here. We're starting to get this market well set up. I also like to look at very short-term cycle forecasts. I'm using timing solutions to do this forecast work with. And you can see the short-term forecasts say around December 10th, we start to see this market bottom. The short-term swing has been pretty reliable here as a general tendency, but cycles, which are not based on seasonality, also suggest a rally this year, starting around mid-month. Now, oh, it's kind of an insight look we can get from the market is looking at the advanced decline line that's shown in black here. The advanced decline line is really important. It's the number of net stock advancing or declining each day. Uh, it, it, you want to take out preferred stocks and convertibles and stuff, and then you get the real sense of the internal strength of the market. And I can run cycles on that, which is really fascinating. This is not price. These are cycles in the advanced decline line, the internal x-ray, if you will, of the marketplace itself. And you can see when we've had cyclical lows, we've rallied in this market, recently cyclical high. Well, it's also saying around the 10th, 11th, somewhere in this general time frame, we should see a rally in the marketplace. Again, this is not based on price. This is not based on seasonality. This is based on short-term cycles in the advanced decline line. I think that's another really positive situation that we can and should rally this year. So can we make it even more specific than that? Oh, let's give it a try. First of all, here's my 2021 natural cycle forecast. This was made a year ago, a year ago about this week, in fact. And you see what we were suggesting, the market should have a big up move and continue rallying, a little pullback about now and a rally at the end of the year. Pretty much the market's following this forecast that we knew over a year ago. So in fact, I think you can get a view of the picture of the future. A lot of people say you can't. Let me show you a few more things about that. Let you decide. And we uh, the 2022 forecast about finished, been working on, in fact, today quite a bit. Uh, it's about done. We'll release it January 1st and we'll do a stockchart.com forecast show. You can go to our email address I really trade.com to sign up. We'll announce the forecast to you when it's released. One of the things I've developed over the years, my trading day of the month concept. I think each trading day of the month in December, here we go, trading day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, can be significant. They're a great way to really focus on the seasonal aspects of the market. We've done a lot of this here on stockcharts.com over the years. And here it is for December. 
if you are to buy on the fourth trading day, listen carefully now, guys, left in the month, so that's right at the end of the month, in the last 23 years, that trade has been successful 22 times, 95% accuracy. In fact, starting with four, five, six, seven trading days left in December, look at that, 95% accuracy. Now, all we're doing is buying on the opening of, say, the fourth trading day left in December. We're going to use a $2,500 stop loss, and we're going to get out of that trade after being in the trade for at least one day and waiting for a profitable opening. Clearly, that's a mechanical trading strategy. I don't trade it that way. I don't suggest you do. I think you should use it. Oh, look at this. Right around the end of December, which fits with what we just saw earlier, too, in the advanced decline line. Uh, in the cycles for the market, we should rally. And this really focuses in on just about when. So as we get there, then I can be looking for my entry. Will I automatically buy in the open? No, I'll be looking to buy at a breakout or buy if we get really oversold in the market. So to me, that's like a really strong, strong point to look for and take short-term buy signals in the s &Ps. Remember the show we did uh, trick or treat time? I'd like to go back to a couple of things we did then to reinforce what I've been trying to teach and lecture about here on stockchart.com. Remember we said October doesn't always have 22 trading days. Again, we were looking at my trading day of the month concept. And this is an exact slide from what we did over a month ago. This year, October only has 21 trading days. So let's look at buying on the first trading day of November. That was what we talked about. We said 31 trades in 31 years, they were all winners. Using a $2,400 stop and a two day hold and get out of the trade. That's what we talked about early October, buying the first trading day of November. And here is the first trading day of November in stockcharts.com. Bingo, and the market moved to the upside 32 years now and 32 winners. You might want to make note of that for next year. You don't need me. You don't need stockcharts.com. Just get a calendar for next year and mark first trading day of November. You better be looking to take buy signals in the marketplace. Okay, so there's a trade for you a year in advance. We can actually get a lot of trades known a long time in advance with this type of approach to the market. Do they all work? No, there is no perfection in this business, but on balance, um, if you do this often enough and we have a big advantage of the game here, as you've seen, you can make money trading. Well, back to the future, let's look at my last presentation as well. A couple more things by looking at the past, we can learn a lot more about the future, our errors, as well as what we did right and what we did wrong. We talked about gold using the commitment of trade reports that open interest is coming down and the commercial we're buying. Remember that? So we thought it's about time. Here's the cyclical forecast in October. Gold should rally until about the 1st of October until November. This is how it actually came out. There's the 1st of October and there's November. So uh, the biggest problem traders really have is lack of confidence. We're afraid all the time. Uh, so by seeing that this stuff works, hopefully I can give you more confidence. So as a trader, you have the confidence to take the trade. You're going to use your stop losses and all that, but you feel more comfortable because see, yeah, there are some things that do work on the market. A lot of things don't work on the market, but some things do. And if you have those, you'll have more confidence to take the trade and trade them correctly. We had a forecast for crude oil, our 57 day cycle and crude oil said it's gonna peak out about in November. Well, the rest is history. This is November 1st. That's what happened. One of the biggest declines seemingly from nowhere in the energy market, but it wasn't. We were able to call that in advance. And now we're ready for a cyclical rally in this market. Keep in mind, cycles go from highs to lows. They don't show the magnitude of the move. They just say, Buy point, buy point, sell point, sell point. To get to the magnitude, we're going to look at other things like maybe the fundamentals, the commitment to trade report, uh, things of that nature. And here's a current crude oil cycle forecast for you. Uh, you can see that it's also saying we should come into a low about now, a little longer term forecast that goes up into the first part of 2022. So as a short term trader, I know I have a bias in the market at this point. So I can be looking for some entries in the market in here 
uh, on a short-term basis. I'm not long energy markets right now, but I'm looking for that uh, buy point to take place because I know I have a potential for rally in the marketplace. I don't live and die by cycles, but I do use them. I think they can be very helpful to say, focus your attention here on buying. If we did back here, focus your attention on selling. The cycle charts are all done using timing solution software. If you want to do more cycle work yourself, well, that's definitely where you should go. Uh, I've used a lot of software. This is the easiest, uh, most, oh my gosh, it's such a powerful piece of software. If you want to use it, there's some great stuff in there that you can use. Seasonality cycles, uh, way beyond stuff, way over my head, but it's um, it's been a real blessing to be able to use that software. It's really good. We talked about trading days of the month for November for crude oil. Again, you know, this is one of the things I've been using for a long time. And to give you a little bit of confidence, we said there it is, the 20th trading day of November in the last uh, 14 years uh, was up 71% of the time was correct and made a lot of money. So this year, there's the 20th trading day of November. Look at that. So remember, we're able to do this way in advance of November, and that's how it came out. Hopefully we can give you a little more confidence because if you lose your confidence in this business, almost anything, if you lose your confidence as an athlete, your career is probably over. You've got to have confidence to step into this mess of trading. Wow, you've got to have that. Well, let's go fishing for gold. Look at that, I love the fish. That's actually a trout. That's not a goldfish, that's a trout. Not a golden trout, but a trout that was red, I guess, will look like gold. So let's go fishing for gold. What's up in the gold market here? Let's take a look. This is the gold seasonal pattern. As you can see right now, around the 1st of December, around the middle of the month of December, gold has traditionally rallied. And you don't have to watch my shows here in stockcharts.com. You can simply get the indicators if you want. So you can look at the seasonal for gold or Tesla or IBM or Apple or whatever you want. You can look at the individual seasonal pattern. And again, my seasonal pattern is really different because we only use data that we know up to this point. Uh, so many seasonal patterns will look at uh, the seasonality and they'll take the seasonal pattern we know now and put it back in time. So when you're studying the past, you're using data from now, out of sample data. So you draw some really bad and wrong conclusions. So we see for gold right here, we should start to bounce and that should be around December 14th. Should be the strong or sweet point of the market to look for and take short-term buy signals. Okay, how about our cycle forecast? Can we get any idea there? Yeah, right about here, we have a cycle forecast. The gold should rally. So what I like to do is to kind of combine this stuff, bring it all together to get a general idea. Here we see that again, the same thing in cycles. We start run up to the end of the year, then we can start to have a pullback. But between now and the end of the year, we should start to see some strength in gold. So again, the same thing. You can go back and start to confirm it. Advanced decline line accumulation coming into the marketplace, uh, commercial buying in the marketplace to confirm the buy signal. But as it is right now, we should be as short-term swing traders looking for an entry in the gold market. One of the fundamental forecasts that I really like to use is uh, intermarket relationships. Gosh, I think these are so valuable. Thanks, by the way, for the comments that you people have made on YouTube. I know there's some bad ones there too. That's great too, because I've learned what I'm doing wrong by the negative comments. So you got something negative, say, hey, go for it. And the positive ones, well, of course, I love those. But um, if we've had a great dialogue with those who have written there on the YouTube comments, and I will reply to those and answer them. I think that's been beneficial both ways. One of the things we've talked about is one market can influence another market. The red line that you're looking at is a U.S. dollar. Clearly, there's a relationship between the dollar index and gold. Gold also has a relationship with crude oil and with interest rates. But the one that recently has been working the best looks like it is, in fact, the U.S. dollar index. And we see that uh, in the red line. The red line is simply the dollar index push forward about three and a half months. So here the dollar index forecast says right around now we should start to bottom and have a pretty good rally, just as it was forecasting a low in this time frame, a peak over here. 
a rally in this time frame, a peak over here. You see the peak was forecast decline, a bit of a rally in down. Now, again, this is not a precise finite forecasting tool. I wish it was, it isn't, but it gives a general idea fundamentally of when gold can have a rally. And it looks like we're getting in the time period when we can expect a rally in the price of gold based on this relationship between the dollar index and gold prices. So we can also look for professional buying. Now, this is a chart of the GLD, that's ETF for gold, if you're not a futures trader. And you can see the last time we we're talking about this, there had been some buying in the gold market here, as there was over here and over here and back here. So the big question is, how did that turn out? And we can take a look at that as well. Uh, I think we've got that up. We don't have that chart, thought we did. Okay, so in any event, we're, we haven't quite entered, well, maybe we did today, I haven't looked, this is not today's chart. We're really close to entering the buy area of professional accumulation in the market with my money flow index. And you can see what happened the last time we've had rallies. So that's another indicator we can watch for and look for uh, something to go on in this marketplace. Okay, there's our cycle forecast from stockcharts.com. I actually have a cycle forecasting technique in cyclecharts.com. It forecasts about 66 days into the future. You can see we should have a low here, pull off here, rally about here, rally up here, sell off here. It's a general cycle indicator. It's not best, it's not perfect because it's a combination of the three most important short-term time frames applied to any market such as gold. But again, I use this to confirm trades. I'm a real believer that it's a combination of ingredients that makes for a good cinnamon roll. All right, it's not just one ingredient. It's got to have a bunch of good stuff in there. And I think it's the same thing with trading. I want to be able to back my trades with stuff. And that's how you can get good trades. Well, time to talk about Bitcoin. So we're going to talk about a fistful of Bitcoin. There he is, old Clint Eastwood, right? Wow, this Bitcoin thing has really taken off. This morning, um, my wife's investment club met and I talked with them about Bitcoin. So a little bit of what I'm talking about here will be some of the things I shared with them. But this has become a huge thing now with uh, people all over the world. There's now, what, 11,000 cryptocurrencies out there that you can buy or sell. Um, how do you do this? What should you do? What's going on with this marketplace? Well, I'll give you my opinion on it. We talked about this in stockcharts.com. We did a special report on it. And this is a chart from the last time. We said, look at this commercial buying. And when they've been buying our, if you will, commercial index suggested Bitcoin should start to rally. And there we are. And this is what happened. Then it started to enter the sell zone. It started to come down. Now, this is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Probably the easiest way for everybody to buy, sell Bitcoins if you're not a computer expert. Uh, there is an ETF, if you will, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and that's Bitcoin. They own uh, four or five percent of all the Bitcoins in the world. Uh, so the easiest way to trade Bitcoins is just trade the stock. But what should happen in Bitcoins? Let's take like a little bit further at that. Bitcoins had a pretty good three-month cycle in it. The cyclical low, we come up, notice kind of a choppy range, then we rally up, oh, cyclical low, we come up around the, there it is, an interesting date, the 12th of December. It looked like we should start to rally again in this market. So pretty good format. Here there are little patterns says, oh, we're gonna go flat, we do. We taper off, we do start to rally, come down, we have. So it looks to me like we can start to get a Bitcoin rally. Maybe Santa Claus is gonna give little boys and girls around the world Bitcoins this year. I don't know. Um, but should we buy the dip or are we the dip? I guess it, it looks like we wanna be the buyer of the dip this year, not only in Bitcoin, but in gold and in the stock market. We don't just know that, we actually have some data, some things that will help us confirm that. That's what I really like. And here's our cycle forecast for Bitcoin. Now this is a pattern developed totally different than with you know, cyclical data. And that's also suggesting we start to rally about the same time, a nice strong rally into the new year, then we come down. 
The nice thing about having this view of the future is then we have a direction. Oh, most likely the market's going to rally. It may not, but we have a good idea, some visibility. We know which way to approach the market from. That's how to best use this stuff. And Bitcoins, I think they're like when I was a kid. You know, my dad didn't understand Elvis Presley music. I loved it. Well, today, cryptocurrencies are the currency adults can't understand and kids do understand. So it's pretty much a kid market, it looks like. People my age go, what the heck is this thing hard for us to understand? Just as it was hard for my dad, I think, to understand Elvis Presley. There's a strong relationship between uh, gold and the cryptocurrency. The gold line you see here is, of course, the cryptocurrency, uh, is gold. And the black line is a, a cryptocurrency, the GPTC. And you can see they pretty much move together. And gold forecasts out about 66 days what's going to happen in cryptocurrency. It says, oh, we should come down and start to rally a little bit. But a better is the dollar index. Look how similar the dollar index, which is in blue, and uh, GBTC Bitcoins move. A lot of similarity in these markets. And here's the forecast. Look how closely they move. It's almost like Bitcoins are just the dollar index on steroids. Oh, and look what it says right here, right now, which we'll start rallying at the first of the year. So another indication we should start to get a rally in this market. Uh, again, we're doing that by looking at the relationship. The dollar index pushed forward in time gives a pretty good idea. Notice it tops and bottoms and then the cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin start to rally. And here's where we are right here, right now. Pretty good path. They seem to follow quite well what's actually going on in the dollar index. Isn't that fascinating? Wow. So I found these intermarket relationships can give me a good view of the future, as well as an understanding of what direction I should trade in and what fundamentals really involve this market. So if there's big news for the dollar index, that's going to affect the Bitcoin. Again, our 2022 forecast is about finished. I'm working on it uh, now. It'll be released January 1st, and we'll do a stockcharts.com showing, of course. And to get information, just go to iReallyTrade.com. Gee, this is really interesting. Two interesting pieces of news this week. One I, I read that I'd like to share with you. When I was a young man trading the markets in the 1960s, the average length of time that a company was in the S&P 500 was about... 30 years. Now, the average length of time that a company's in the S&P 500 is about 15 years because there's been so much change, technological change. It used to be these companies were always in the, in the index that they get tossed out all the time now. There's that much change going on in our society, including, of course, Bitcoin we just talked about. And listen to this. A recent study from Investment Company Institute's fact book showed that nearly half of all mutual funds from 10 years ago have been shut down or merged. Wow, isn't that interesting? Half the funds shut down or merged, which they merged because they weren't doing so well. They got bought out essentially, if you will, because they had a lot of money assets under management. So you can't do any worse than that. Half of them, we can say blew out, but we can say just about that, blew out in the trading programs in the marketplace. And I think that's because they really don't use a lot of technical analysis, a lot of guessing in the big funds. Everybody likes to buy a stock because it's a hot stock. You should have it in your portfolio, not necessarily. So with things like stockcharts.com and the old days chart books, we could get a lot better insight on what may and should happen in the future. Well, I'd like to wish a Merry Christmas to all of our trading friends. And as always, thanks, Stock Charts, so much for having me on. And thank you guys and gals for following me. What an honor to have people make comments on YouTube, give some notes, talk a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, we have friends around the world. We appreciate you so much. It's been a great career. And thanks to all of you. And again, good luck and good trading and a very Merry Christmas. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.